Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be talking about old routines and try to assess how judo might have looked like decades earlier, I would say 70 years before and even older. So now we all know that there is a huge emphasis on competition. A lot of sports or martial arts are gravitating towards this because of federations, Olympic Games, sponsors, etc. Uh, however, judo is a very rich art. It has so many things. It has, of course, you know, self-defense drills. The founder was very big on it. You have ceremonial types of kata. You have, of course, self-defense kata. And here you see uh, kata that demonstrates the core and the truths and of judo. And it's a very important part of judo. Personally, I think everyone should train them, regardless of who you are in the judo realm. Of course, there was such a thing as judo dance. I've talked about this. I made a video on it. And uh, this is just to show just how rich just one martial art could be. Uh, yet now we only focus on the randori aspect because it can easily translate to well, sports sports, athletics, competition, sponsorship, making a living essentially and making a name for yourself. So how could have looked like personally, I think it would have looked like the following. So of course, you have a lot of drilling, uchikomi, nagekomi and randori. That was always the case. Even competition uh, existed, all Japan, so many challenges. Uh, etc. However, I do think the split was, I would say, 50-50 or 60-40 between what we do today and self-defense uh, drilling. And every demonstration or video that was taped from that era, the first half of the 20th century, you would see the same. Everything is split into vicious rendering and a lot of drilling and self-defense uh, at the same time here you see in japan not in the west um, completely unrelated to what you just saw here you see i believe this is matsumoto he is demonstrating technique drilling them repetition after repetition very similar to what we do today he has his weird type of entries very low i really admire it that tayotoshi is what we practice somewhat here in france it's a bit different than uh, I'll talk about it later. But anyways, here you see that uh, he is drilling just regular judo for sparring and competing and doing these uh, nagekomi in movement. But also he trained something else. And you're going to see it's not just the ceremonial type kata. Here you see he's doing uh, drills of self-defense, very common scenarios. Kata, does, it's not necessarily just those prearranged techniques that you saw that we do today for exams, but everything that's not randori can be considered kata. It's form. You're doing the form of a technique and here you can do it far more lively or very static, of course, depending on what you, where you are in that technique. But uh, Kano even talked about kata in the sense that you, should, you can use uh, protection and uh, plastic uh, weapons or rubber uh, weapons to train um, uh, kata. So obviously it's not just the way that you think it means today. Now here you see uh, Hicks and Gracie demonstrating the same uh, technique of the uh, color grab that Matsumoto was doing. Uh, he preserved decades later and again I'm very glad uh, about this. Um, so here you see it, there is a pattern among uh, these old uh, generations that have learned uh, judo, even in Brazil. So I'm sure uh, you've seen this uh, 1912 demonstration I'm, I'm about to show you. Uh, this one here, uh, I've shared it countless times. Uh, but this portion, the latter half of it, the self-defense part, you can see they're not, quote, sparring, but uh, he is being attacked. He's training 
uh, surprise attacks he is training these very lively drills uh, you can miss you can do it very good depending on the number of repetitions again it's not that it is a black belt techniques it's techniques that are done at a black belt level so uh, it's important to, uh, to see here of course the um, the how do you say the techniques are being done one after the other the attacks are being uh, done quickly and the response is being done uh, quickly and these types of drills can give you some type of muscle memory for everything that's about to jump on you i've had talks countless times with the valente brothers of course and they talked about surprise attacks all the time here this types of very dynamic drilling this also can be uh, in the kata uh, umbrella or under the kata umbrella it's not uh, just regular sparring it is drills but they are very they are being done very much in a dynamic way and uh, it makes you wonder uh, what happened this type of training so in judo i would say roughly the mid part of the 19th uh, 20th century you had the ijf and from there lobbying for things like world championship started and then of course the entry into the olympics in 1964 and of course, that was basically it um, for this type of training. However, how can I be sure that it was, I would say, 50-50 between self-defense drills or kata and randori? It's what the founder wrote. He wrote that judo training should be 50% kata, self-defense, and 50% randori. He says it's normal, especially young people, to gravitate more towards randori because it is far more fun and unexpected but kata is very important and should not be lost imagine 50 percent so where if, if we were to create some type of alternative timeline where the ijf did not get involved uh, how would judo would have kind of looked like we can kind of get an idea from what happened in brazil because you see um, the Gracies took uh, over. They did not get involved with the Judo Federation of Brazil. They kept training the way, you know, the old masters taught when they first arrived to Brazil, which was, of course, a lot of randori and a lot of self-defense drills. And, of course, you can tell here Elio was very much fond of self-defense. Um, Pedro Valente speaks highly of him and about self-defense. And drilling and randori now does that mean that the way they trained did not prepare them for competition and go against other arts absolutely not if you just read one page or two articles on them uh, about how they did things in the 20th century you would know that they went out and competed all the time even in Japan before IJF you had the all Japan you had all these fights when you want to get your rank you had to go and compete it was all about challenges. It was all about going and competing. However, the competitive aspect did not overshadow, did not devour every other aspect like kata, uh, self-defense drills. You had the, the judo dance, which I, again, I made a video on it and its history. And it was far richer because every uh, aspect of judo was practiced uh in a more balanced way. Now you have this off balance of athleticism and uh, Jigoro Kano in his letter to Koizumi, he says that I, I am not opposed to it being an Olympic sport. However, you should be careful of nationalism, of what's gonna happen with um, federations, politics, and judo becoming solely a sport and only reliant on randori or only focuses on randori. And he was 100% correct. Another thing I'd like to point out is the Valley Tudo fights that happened with Gracie students against other uh, practitioners from Capoeira, from striking, from other Jiu Jitsu dojos, etc. So, uh, IBJJF did not come around until the 1990s. So, uh, you still have, for example, all these Gracie schools today 
sports wise or sparring wise they're more on the ground grappling aspect i would say if we didn't have igf or olympics it would be the same but more on the stand-up aspect but if you can see they still have their self-defense curriculum a lot of gracie schools they tell you that you cannot go from this rank to that rank without doing the self-defense techniques the self-defense exams you see helson you see hickson you see uh, hanner and uh, uh, Hiron. the whole schools they spar they train they even train ufc fighters but if you look at their self-defense curriculums they're very solid and they still kept all these techniques that i've shared from old meiji books uh, and they still practice them today and it's a shame that they uh, you know thanks to the olympics and all that stuff which i am very much against they're pretty much gone unfortunately so uh, if you have anything to add please let me know down below consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content this was shadi and thank you for listening